Hi, it's Kendall here. <laughs> Boy, I'm already drained. This is a this is a whirlwind we're about to go on today. But if you're new around here, welcome. And if you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? And it's Saturday. And if you don't know what Saturday is, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies and a beat to the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. Speaking of which, by the way, Bad Movies and a Beat is one year old. I don't know if this is a good birthday present because this movie is pretty awful, but you know, celebrations. It's a weird little series. It's a weird little prize. But yes, thank you all so much for enjoying the series as well as just enjoying the channel overall. I really, really appreciate it. Last week, we watched the love story that no one asked for, Neo Ned. The story of a black woman and a neo-Nazi falling in love. Oh, how cute. More uncomfortable than the actual subject itself are the unexpected people actually playing in it, if you didn't watch last week. It, it was quite an eye opener, like of all people, really? These two people, really? Two people that you will probably know? Such a disappointment. But uh, it was a fun time? <laughs> Question mark? If you haven't seen that video, feel free to check it out up above, or you can check it out in the Bat Movies and a Beat playlist. Hoo chow. So this week, so um, <laughs> So this week, um, wow. <laughs> Y'all are uh, in for an experience, honestly, truly. It, it is remarkable. Honestly, this week I kind of wanted to show you guys this because it's been an 11 year fever dream of mine. And also I'm a little bit of a sadist. So I kind of wanted to drag y'all along with me for this. Just a little bit, just tiny, just a little bit. Don't. Trust me entirely with your peace of mind. And also a part of me is actually truly surprised that I didn't get demonetized last week. So I figured let's press the luck. Let's see how far we can go. So a few weeks ago, I started to get an influx of people wanting me to watch a 2009 sci-fi horror film by the name of Splice. Apparently the movie had just been on Netflix. So a lot of people had seen it for the first time when that happened. But oh, naive ones. I had already seen this film. Not only had I already seen this film, I saw this film in theaters. <laughs> Again, it was this very repressed memory of mine. I forgot about this. 2009, I was 14 years old and my friend had a birthday party in which she brought all of us to the movie theater to watch Splice. Hey Brianna, how you doing? She's a cool girl, I should sue. <laughs> but yeah, she brought us all of us underage, so I don't know how we all got in there now that I think about it. Was there like a parent that said we could go? I don't remember. The fact that we're not all just truly more messed up people is uh, truly astounding. I, I, I love that. But yes, me and a group of other 13 and 14 year olds went in to see Splice. Now, with that said, it's been years, what, 11 years since I've seen this movie? There was general parts of my brain that recalled it being really messed up. But that's about it. I remembered it was really messed up. There was a scene that I could not completely tear away from my brain. But I must say, seeing this movie now as an adult, it's way worse than I recalled it being. If I recall correctly, I left the theater saying, what the hell was that? But I didn't remember being like, what the f is that? Like, I remember being like, ew, that was gross. Like, I could have not seen that. But now I was just like, wow, this is actually truly traumatizing. So, um, you're welcome. I'm bringing it to you. Diet traumatizing, just a little bit, just a splash. If you want a full dose, feel free to watch it yourself, but don't say I did it, you did it, that's your fault. So tired of people being like, oh my God, Kendall, I watched this because of you, why didn't you tell me, but I literally make the videos to tell you. So if you go watch it, that is your fault, okay? Don't blame me, all right? I'm just trying to give you the digestible version so that if you decide to ruin your digestion on your own, Tis up to you, sis. Like, okay, I might be gassing it up too much. It's not super traumatizing, okay? It's not like human centipede gross. It's more gross than your average, I can see this at the theater film though, is what I'm getting at. If you watch certain anime, you'll be fine. Maybe that's why I left the theater thinking, wow, that was kind of weird. <laughs> but that was about it. So allow us to embark on the whirlwind that is Splice. So our two main characters are a duo of scientists named Elsa and Clive. And I was like, yep, that look like a Clive. Like almost too much. Like his parents didn't even name him for like the first six years of his life. And then when he went into kindergarten wearing like a black robe, thou art Clive. But yeah, Clive and Elsa are partners, both romantically and career wise. And they are both embarking on a very ambitious scientific experiment. They are combining the DNA of various animals and species on this planet 
to create a completely new species. Ew, what the f is that? This is Ginger, the second of the test life form. She is the female that they've created. They have a male species that came first named Fred. And these two are their first successful attempts at playing God. Hey God, take all your time. And since they were able to successfully make these things, they start thinking of the possibilities that this new technology, this new ability could afford humankind. But Fred and Ginger allots them the ability to read and discover new forms of medicinal proteins. Or at least that's what I garner from all the nerd speak. I don't know, it goes over my head. I'm not a science bitch. I liked to write, even though I misspelled everything. We love a queen with a verbose vocabulary, but doesn't actually know how to spell verbose. V-E-R-B-O-U-S. Fred and Ginger has allowed them to use new technology to find new medicinal proteins that can help cure problems in livestock. However, they said, if we can take it up a notch and start using human DNA, that's where we can truly make a difference in the world. They're like, yes, if we have this technology, we could really end a whole host of human genetic diseases. We could really change the entire landscape of medicine, cure certain cancers, Parkinson's, other forms of genetic diseases. All we need is a touch of human DNA. They pitched this idea to a French woman. They never really tell us who she is, but we're just meant to garner that she's some big wig that has some form of financial backing power for this experiment, for this research. Let's, let's sprinkle some human in it. And she says, mm, hold your horses. We're not gonna do that. There's a lot of moral implications in regards to essentially using human DNA to make a new life form, right? They're like, no, instead, we would like you to isolate whatever protein that you found in this here experiment that you've done so far. And we're gonna use that to see how well it'll work on livestock. So isolate that protein and uh, we'll stop there. But of course, this is a movie. So they're like, mm, I think we can take it into our own hands. Like we could, we could do a little research without them. You know, this is a splash, this is a splash. We're curious, we need to know. They decide to go into their own little medical place where they got it, who funded it, wh like who, whose is this? And that's how you know they're really doing it for themselves because these motherfuckers not wearing gloves, <laughs> not wearing lab coats, eating pizza over test tubes and stuff. I'm gonna synthesize a pepperoni monster. They're like, yeah, we got this in our own hands. And they decide to use a Jane Doe donor human donor to do their own synthesis. Now they planned, or at least Clive planned to stop there. But Elsa's like, let's take it just a little bit farther. Let's like put it in a synthetic womb. Like, let's see if it works essentially. Cause basically at this point they've made sperm. Let's put it in an egg and see what happens, right? And he's like, no, that's a bad idea. She's like, we won't even let it be born, whatever it is. But just like, let's just see what it does. Curiosity, killing the cat and all that. But yeah, she's like, I'm not even gonna let it go to full term. Just like, let's just see what it does. They put this uh, baby juice in a fake womb, right? And lo and behold, before they could even like test it, it grew so fast that it was ready to pop way before then they were expecting it to. I don't know why they had any assumptions about it considering they've never done this before with a human, but you know. But yeah, they had expectations and this greatly surpassed that. So their demon alien child is ready to be born, but they had to work quickly because their fake womb was super pressurized and whatever's in there is gonna die soon. So they're like, you know what we gotta do? We gotta depressurize it from the inside. This dumb bitch puts her hand in the womb thing and lo and behold, it's peckish. I hate horror movies for this reason specifically because the only way that this movie can persist is if somebody is drastically stupid. So stupid. Again, in ways that I would hope real people would never be but I'm always amazed and always surprised. But yeah, they get her free. She starts to have a seizure. He has a very uh, conveniently placed EpiPen. Do EpiPens stop seizure? And they give birth to a, what the f is that? They give birth to a stomach with a stinger. But yes, after the night they just had, Clive is like, we should kill it. And she's like, no, like we need to know what we can learn from it. But they both go down to the lab, check in on the little abomination. And lo and behold, they think it's dead. But come to find out it's not dead. It's burst out of the womb. <laughs> 
No. That <laughs> the demon baby. Oh hell no. Nah. It looks like a raw chicken and a squirrel had spawn. And this dumb bitch over here like, I mean, hey cute. So they eventually reach the reasonable conclusion to either kill it or knock it out. They decide to knock it out so that they can learn more about it. Clive is like, yo, let's kill it and do an autopsy. But she's like, no, don't kill it because it's already essentially aging at a super fast speed. It'll die soon anyway. And we can observe what its entire lifespan is like. You know, we created a new being. Let's see how it goes. <clears throat> this is a movie. So guess which one they decided to do. So of course they decide to observe it. Meanwhile, by the way, they're still doing their tests on Ginger and Fred, the first two organisms that they created. Around this time, it's noticed that Ginger is starting to get lower levels of estrogen, which is somewhat strange and concerning, but they don't really focus on it because they do have like a, like a demon spawn egg head baby hands, <laughs> chicken leg. Oh, and it got little T-Rex arms, ugh. That's more of their focus right now, okay? So around this time, some kind of like indescript investors for their medical research are planning to come by. So they need to show Fred and Ginger so that they can intrigue some medical pharma investor people. Pressure's on, they need to do a good presentation in order to get the go ahead to continue doing this, this general type of research. But the demon baby is starting to take a lot more attention from the couple. They're trying to hide it because, you know, don't want anybody else to know. And also it's growing. They're giving it cognitive tests. They're dressing it up like a little girl. And Elsa's starting to treat it kind of like a child. She names it, calls it Dren. And Clive is growing swiftly concerned with how enamored Elsa seems to be with the little thing, whatever it is. He's concerned they're gonna get fired you know, go to jail maybe even for something. I don't know what they would go to jail for. Is it illegal to make clones of humans? Have we gotten that far? We're planning that far ahead. By the way, we don't know when you'll figure out how to do it, but once you do, you can't. Elsa's a lot more ambitious and she's like, stop being so afraid. <laughs> but alas, someone does find out about Dren, Clive's brother. And after which Clive starts to feel more pressure to have Dren hidden. So they decide, to hide her in the storage basement as they continue to do more tests and see how she evolves. Well, particularly Elsa's really leading the train in this way, but he's like reluctantly coming along with her. But when they bring Dren down, Dren starts to get sick. She starts to vomit. She has a fever, she can't breathe. Elsa's starting to show you like a lot of maternal fear. She's like, oh my God, my baby, oh no. Her fever's really hot, so they decide to put her in a cold bath. But for some reason, Dren starts to panic or it's painful, I don't know. But she, she wilding out, she's screaming. For some reason, nobody hears her in their basement, but okay. And something clicks in Clive where he's just like, let's kill it. So he attempts to drown Dren and Elsa's losing her mind. She's like, oh my God, not my baby. Don't kill my baby now. But once everything calms down, come to find out Dren is amphibious. Is <laughs> how wonderfully, wonderfully convenient. And how did you know? You did know, right? <laughs> oh, bitch. Yup, yeah, I knew. Yeah, I totally knew. What? What are you talking about? Of course I knew. Mm hmm. I'm a scientist. But yep, Elsa's continuing to treat her like a child, like she's giving her dolls. And oh boy, she's growing up quickly. Now, the next scene really helped confirm some suspicions I had very early in this movie because the next scene is Clive and Elsa having some very, very unsatisfactory looking sex. Just like, ew, like super dop. <laughs> no warm up, no, no foreplay, just nothing. Almost like you could hear like the iron rusting against itself. It looks so not good. And kind of like in the shadows, Dren sees them. Now, when we walked in and I noticed that she was getting older, Dren, I said, <sighs> Clive's gonna f it, isn't he? I could feel it. <laughs> Even when I saw this movie for the first time in theaters, I was like, he's gonna f it, isn't he? Like she's becoming curious about sex. He's definitely giving me a vibe of like, I put my d in a hot pocket. I don't know, that's just the vibe I get. But alas, let's continue. Hate to ruin it for you. So it's time for Clive and Elsa to present 
Ginger and Fred to the shareholders. By the way, as I'm saying that, these names are so just don't run off the tongue very well at all. It's just like, what are their names again? Why would you name people? But yes, Ginger and Fred, they're presenting that. And the goal was to present this like beautiful culmination of a new species as they mate and meet each other. Um, that is not what happened. It got, it got a little messy. Come to find out the reason that this whole thing became a debacle, even though it seemingly worked earlier in the movie is because suddenly Ginger had actually become male. And these two males, in a confined area got aggravated and the shareholder presentation did not go well. And there's a new panic because all eyes are on them now. So they decide that they have to move Dren to a completely different location. They're gonna move her into an old barn that Elsa's mom used to live in. Now, this is a side note. They keep saying how much of a horrible childhood Elsa had with her mom, but they never really, really go into that. So I don't understand why that was such a thing. They felt the need to keep telling us. It, it didn't really explain any of her behavior either. So I don't, maybe she wanted to be a better mom than her mom. I don't know. It was a completely unnecessary addition to the script. But anyway, they bring Dren to this barn and Dren is not a fan. She does not like it one bit, not one bit. So she runs away. Ooh, Lord, I am having a struggle eye makeup day. This is not it. But yes, Dren freaks out when they bring her to the barn. She ends up running away, eats a bunny. And Dren is starting to reach her kind of rebellious phase. She's starting to focus more on her looks. She's starting to become preoccupied with the boredom and the tedium of being locked away. And so one day she has a tantrum, she busts out of the barn and gets on top of the roof and come to find out this bitch has wings, cause why not? And she's raring to fly away cause she can't be bothered, no longer wants to be a part of this. The only reason she does not fly away is because Clive says, we love you. He's gonna f it, isn't he? Elsa starts putting makeup on Dren, putting her in pretty dresses, giving her jewelry, trying to make her feel more like a lady. Elsa starts to notice that Dren's been drawing little pictures of Clive. And only Clive. Elsa notices that Dren has a pet cat that she kind of snuck in and all of a sudden she's like, no, you can't have the cat. She took that cat away and I knew that cat gonna die. I don't know when it's gonna die, but it's gonna die at some point. So later that night, while Elsa's asleep, Clive goes to visit Dren. They have a bonding moment in which they listen to music and dance. And as a father figure, that alone is innocent enough. But again, I still had a sneaking suspicion that he's gonna fuck it. So this immediately made me uncomfortable, especially they did a very telling slow motion of Clive looking at Dren's neck and her features and her face and it's disgusting. <laughs> but apparently it's because he noticed Elsa's DNA is actually in Dren. If you recall, she had said that it was just some random Jane Doe, but no, it's actually her own DNA in Dren. So effectively Dren really is Elsa's daughter experiment spawn baby, not just in name only. And Clive is disgusted. He's like, why would you do that? Oh my God, you're taking this too far. It's supposed to just be an experiment. Oh my God. Soon after, for some reason, randomly, Elsa feels bad about taking Dren's cat away. So she gives it back. Lo and behold, Dren kills the cat immediately. Like it didn't even stand a chance. And she almost kills Elsa, but instead she just takes the key so that she can bust out of the barn. But before she can go, Elsa hits her in the head with a shovel. And about this time is when Elsa says, let me stop with the shenanigans. You are not my child. You are my experiment and therefore I must treat you as such because you almost tried to kill me. What does she do? She decides to remove all of the human-like things on Dren, the clothes, the makeup, jewelry, anything that's meant to adorn her to make her look more like a human. Stop with that foolishness, even though I started that foolishness, but nope, no more of that. And beyond that, she cuts off Dren's tail because effectively now Dren is an official threat. After she cuts off the tail, Clive comes in, he's horrified. He's like, what are you doing? And effectively we see the switch between Clive and Elsa. Elsa has now become the, nah, I'm over this. She's, she's an experiment, I'm done. And now Clive is more emotionally connected to Dren. 
Elsa's like, where's that damn protein we supposed to be synthesizing? Because use Dren, she has whatever proteins we're looking for. Like, let's stop playing these games. But Clive's in too deep. He's too emotionally attached to Dren. Perhaps they're trying to say that this is due to the very DNA that's within her, Elsa's DNA. He's attracted. And that is something that both disturbs and intrigues him. Elsa takes upon herself to synthesize the protein. She finally finishes it using Dren's DNA. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, Clive pays Dren a visit and Dren tries to put that alien wop down. God, let me tell you, man, I don't place any bets. I don't plan on winning. He's down. It was a little touch and go in the beginning, but I knew it would happen. And you know, let me just be honest with you. It wasn't even that weird because A, like I said, I saw it coming, but B, men are disgusting. They'll f cantaloupes, leather seat cushions, freshly baked pies. Like I'm never surprised by the things that men will have sex with. It, it's truly, <laughs> it's truly not even remarkable at this point. So I guess it wasn't even that weird that he was going to have sex with his adopted spawn. With that said, I do feel like the creators really got off on the, on the kind of mutant <clears throat> dynamic going on. I can't show you any of it, of course, because I'll swiftly get demonetized if I'm not demonetized already, but like, they show the wings <laughs> and the tail and they get off on it. They're like, yeah, we're gonna show the best parts of this because we want you to remember that he's fucking a gargoyle. But guess who catches them? When I tell y'all I scream laughed so loud, it was not even funny, bro. I was, I had tears. <laughs> I had actual tears in my eyes. It was, not, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's messed up that he would do that. Question, is that bestiality? That's bestiality, right? Some people were saying incest. It's not incest. It's not his DNA in her. Technically it's closely related to him having sex with his girlfriend's daughter, which is still messed up, but not incest. Am I really sitting here trying to figure out what level of fucked up this actually is? <laughs> What difference does it make? Whoever made this is going to hell anyway. <laughs> but alas, Elsa and Clive have to talk this over. And somehow at the end of it, it became both of them. You never wanted a normal child. So you were afraid of losing control. We've chained her up. We've locked her away from the world. We maimed her. I maimed her. You had sex with our chicken foot experiment and it's my fault. Okay. But alas, it is true that both of them have definitely made some mistakes in this whole endeavor. But I say that Clive really did take it home for the team. He, he truly overachieved. But yes, Elsa has the protein. So essentially their experiment needs to end. So they decide that they're gonna go to Dren and end it. By the time they get there, she's already dead. Pick her up, put her in a shallow grave behind the barn. But then we realize that there's still 13 minutes left in this movie, so. Here we go. Lo and behold, Dren is not actually dead. She's back and she now is a man. Ah ha ha, foreshadowing. And just like a man, he's just destructive. Some good old horror movie stupidity ensues. People dropping stuff, tripping over stuff, not running fast enough for my enjoyment. And at some point, Elsa finally gets the gist. And she says, I'ma leave this n to die. But before she can get away, she trips and falls or she's attacked. I don't remember, she doesn't make it. Trigger warning, gets, uh, sexually assaulted by Dren, which is really disturbing. But Elsa's able to survive because Clive stabs Dren in the back with a giant piece of wood. Dren survives, knocks out Clive. Elsa hits Clive in the head with a giant rock, but doesn't finish the job because she hesitates. And in that hesitation, Clive dies. She finally gets her head out her ass and then finishes off the job. I don't know what to do with my hair. But yes, Clive is dead. Everyone's dead except for Elsa. And she's able to go back. She talks to the French investment lady and essentially she gives her this handsome figure of money as they continue on with their current experiment, which is Elsa having a Dren demon baby. Because why not? Why not? You could just put an end to it and walk away. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> this bitch really just said, what's the worst that can happen? Girl, I don't know. You survived this long. I, what is the worst? It couldn't, I... <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's the movie. Um, Horrid. It's a lot. Um, it's 
way worse than I remember it being. Like, again, I remember walking out of there being like, okay, this is, that was weird. But holy guacamole, that's really bad. But hey, it's a fun time if you wanna freak your friends out. I think it's definitely, it's definitely like a let's get drunk and watch this type of film. So, hey, the world's ending, why not? Me and my hair gonna fight. I guess it don't matter, the video's over, it's whatever. But yeah, it's awful. I'm really happy that I didn't really remember most of it, cause that way I could live a happy life <laughs> these last 11 years. And last 10 years, this year does not count. But yeah, if you like this video, be sure to like this video, comment any bad movies I should be watching. Be sure to follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, and other places that you'd be surprised I am, all of which are Kenny JD. And I will see you guys next time.